So we have here today the Marshall Emberton 2. Obviously that means there was an Emberton 1. Some people had issue with that. The biggest thing I ever remember hearing about it was it had distortion at higher volumes. So pretty much they've remedied that as I've listened to this. So it seems like they've taken care of that problem. As far as the speaker goes itself, I'm going to show you the startup. I really like the startup. Gives you that little guitar riff. That means you're connected via Bluetooth. Ooh, wham blam. Pause. <laughs> anyway, it does have a nice battery meter here that lets you know how much battery you have. This is rated for 30 hours plus of battery life. From my experience of using this, it does last a long time. I've been playing this thing quite a bit and I'm still like 70, 80% battery. The design of it, much like the previous model, it has a metal grill with the Marshall logo, metal gr grill on the back. It's kind of a rubbery feel to it and it's got kind of a grain to it if you notice, kind of like a leather type grain it, within the rubber. And it has just a single USB-C on the side. So there's no 3.5 millimeter jack. I don't like that. And this is also a, they call it a stereophonic, I think is what they call it. Whereas it has stereo sound, 360 degree sound, because it has a driver and a passive radiator on both front and back. Now that's typically something I don't like. I like to have everything facing me so I can put it where I want it. But it is what it is with the speaker. That's how they designed it. The multifunction button, I don't really care for because you have to be careful how you push it. It does different things. If you just push it in the middle, it's play pause. If you go left and right, it's back a track, forward a track. Or if you hold it to go fast forward or rewind, up and down for your volume. So it's kind of tricky. You could be trying to, say, change a track and then you end up pausing it. It's... It's kind of finicky sometimes because it's just a circular disc that you're pushing down on. So you got to really push it in a certain direction, especially if you're trying to do something in the middle. This is your Bluetooth button right here. So when you're wanting to pair to it, it'll pair up to two devices. This is IP67. So it is waterproof, dirt dust proof, can be submerged for a brief time. Bluetooth 5.1, 30 plus hours. It even says that, like I said, it does have a good battery life. I will give it that. Now, the speaker itself, the design of it, I really like. I mean, this it's not cheap. I mean, basically, it's $169.99 retail. So that's the bad. <laughs> if you got the good, the bad, and the ugly, the good would be, obviously, the water rating, USB-C, long battery life, the design of the speaker, very, very slick looking. So you're paying for the Marshall name and the quality looking speaker and it does sound pretty good too we'll get to that but it's definitely not a cheapo speaker it's something that if you want to have in your office or your den on your desk somewhere by your computer you know you're listening to it that you don't need something that's going to blast you out something that looks classy and this it does have a very classy look to it so the bottom it just has like a circular thing that's raised up or rectangle that's raised up so it doesn't have actual like feet it just has a slightly raised up thing that goes all around it like i said it's got a little it's got a little bit of weight to it it feels doesn't feel cheap so the next question after we've done the good and the bad was the price next we got the ugly so let's see what it sounds like before we get to the before we get to the uh, audio test one thing I did forget to mention, there is an app for this, a Marshall app. It's very limited. It has three different EQs. The standard EQ, and then they have one that's called Push. It's supposed to be more bass and treble. One that's just for, like, podcasts, the other one. So, basically, the one that I like, I think, is the best one, is the default one. Other than that, there's not much you can do in the app. You can run this one that they call Stack Mode, which is more than one speaker. You, I didn't, they don't really say how many you can run together. But multiples, you can do that through the app. So other than that, the app is very limited. There's no custom EQ or anything like that. So you can do updates from there also, firmware updates if they have them come out. 
So now we're going to do a sound check. Like I said, this speaker has drivers on the front and the back. So you're not getting everything at you when you listen to it. But it does give you better room coverage. So we're going to start at 40%. And this is just in its default mode. has a good punchy sound to the bass. The treble's just got a little bit of ch -ch to it. Let's go up to 60%. That little hiccup was. Let's go up to 80%. Until it starts getting a little bright. The bass has been cut just a little. Go up to 100%. We'll I had to stop it right there. My ears just got assaulted. <laughs> when you get to 100%, this thing, the DSP, the way they've got this thing, set up it cuts the base obviously it's to keep it from distorting but when you get to 100 percent the base it's kind of like that u boom l the base gets cut drastically and the treble takes over to this one especially to harsh levels we'll go back this is 100 percent still <laughs> That's worse than the that's worse than the UV male. That's ugly. This is this is what I was getting at with the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's the ugly. That that is ugly. That's butt ugly. You see that walking down the street, you look the other way and turn the other way. Let's go back. <laughs> let's go take the volume back down to 60% and I'll change the track here. This is 60%. It's not bad at 60%. We'll go up to 80. Starts getting pretty bright at 80. Hundred percent. Oh, oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's just bad. See, like you go down there at forty percent. Forty percent, it's not bad. When you get to eighty, it starts going. Eh. When you get to hundred, it's like, oh, please, somebody save me. <laughs> So, I, I, I. My bottom line on this would be, if you want something that looks really cool, that has a good battery life, waterproof and all that, there's a lot, there's quite a bit of good to it. If you're gonna listen to it at low volumes, you don't need something, like I said, maybe you just need something on your desk or something, or in your office or in your den that you're gonna listen to. This will give you a decent sound up to 80%. Once you get to 80%, it starts getting sketchy. And at 100%, it goes full sketch. <laughs> so I, overall, I probably would not recommend this speaker. There are other options out there in this size that will do better for less money. I think for $170, you're really way overpriced. I'm sure this thing will go on sale, but man, 
uh, it's just if you need something that's very loud obviously if you're gonna get something this small you don't really you're not really getting something to blast your large room out or something but if you ever need loud sound out of this thing you're gonna be anybody in the room is gonna be having a, their ears assaulted so let me know what you guys think of the Marshall M Burton 2 they definitely took care of the distortion they went full 180 on that and just said we'll just cut the bass totally and we'll just put the brights on Woo. that's a wrap guys they say 